Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my live today. Today is Tuesday, Instagram Tuesday, and it is also today, because I decided it was, it is Tim Holtz Tuesday, which means we're going to play with some Tim Holtz materials and products. And, you know, we probably play with, good morning, Zoe, we probably play with uh, Tim Holtz stuff every Tuesday. I don't really remember. I mean, last week we played with alcohol inks, I think. Um, those aren't necessarily specifically Tim Holtz. He has his own line, I think, of stuff, but... So today, I want to play with uh, some Distress Oxide spray, uh, and I'm going to be using some index cards because, as we know, index card a day is coming up in June, it's starting in June, and this is a program where uh, there are some prompts, and the idea is a challenge to use an index card, which is three by, I don't know what these are, three by five index cards and uh, work on them every day for I think 30 days, maybe a little longer. Um, what's the name, Gypsy? Gypsy99 I think is her Instagram handle and it's like yellow rose, Daisy Yellow Road or something like that. I'll have to share it later. Um, I'll tag it in her, I'm sure I've posted a few times about it, but um, so last night I was watching a video, of course, it was research, I was watching a research video, um, on Masterboards, and, um, I actually found another video from a new person that I started following on, um, making a index card that's really pretty, it has like a B on it, and it, it was really cool, and I watched her video, and she did some collage, and it was pretty cool, but part of what she did was she used oxide spray to create some really interesting, um, designs on her cards and I thought it was cool that she was using cards so I want to let you know that I have purchased some um, heavyweight index cards from um, Amazon and these are okay I wouldn't call them as heavyweight as I've seen from like other brands but they're okay I mean they didn't they didn't really get too bad these are just normal cards which with alcohol inks kind of got flimsy but they're okay. I'm going to probably add some collage to them later. So here are some of what I did last night. And it was really fun. I was playing with it. The girl in the video, she sprayed, she used the index, the oxide spray on a acrylic block. And I said, hey, I bet I could do the same thing on a gel plate. So, um, so that's what I want to do today. And I, you know, obviously I did some last night, but I want to do it again today just for fun. So I have it on a video that we can all watch again later. So, of course, what did I take? I took, um, and I did mix some regular plain old Distress Spray, too. I'm still new to sprays. I'm not the best at them. I'm, I'm still learning and getting familiar with uh, using the Oxide and the Distress Spray stain. Um, but it's fun, and I, to me, it's all just playtime. This is all stuff that I have in the store, so please go check it out and... See what I have and and buy yourself some stuff to play with this summer if you haven't already. If you don't already have it, um, if you do, then awesome. And just get your stuff out and play with it anyway. Okay? That's my encouragement for you. Okay. So all I'm basically going to do here is this is what – it's not even spraying it. I'm just going to kind of drop it on the plate. Because if you spray, you're going to get a um, – I didn't shake it up, but you're going to get a big splatter. So you can definitely spray, but I actually really liked doing it this way. And that was Salvage Patina, which is the new color. And then I sprayed with water because the oxide, and this is specifically oxide, the oxide activa activates well with water. It's what's gonna give you that really uh, different effect. It's definitely a different effect, okay. Let's see. The salvage patina is fun because it has a couple of different things going on there. So, I would love to know if you guys are planning to really want to shake up your oxide spray because it will settle. So if you're not doing the index card today, I encourage you to think about doing it. You don't have to follow the prompts. The idea is just to work on something every day, something creative. 
And I do believe that she has an email that you can join to um, actually send you those prompts. So I'm just trying, kind of playing with putting kind of a base layer of color down here. This one is Mermaid Lagoon, which is actually, a, I really like this color. And of course I did have to get out some of my purples because it's purple month. So as much as I wanted to play with the blues, I had to get out some of the purple later. So I'll probably get that out in a little bit. So you just slap that on there and you know, the, the plate is just kind of your, your place to put your, your spray. You could do this on a normal mat. If you have a craft mat or a glass Tim Holtz mat, you can use anything for the base. But I like using the gel plate because I'm comfortable with the gel plate. So this one is Cracked Pistachio. It's kind of a lighter green. The Salvage Patina is really nice. It gives you a lot of different variations in the colors I've found. So you kind of throw that on there and then you get a really cool cloudy effect. Let me move these out of the way. As, with I, as I find with most gel printing sessions, you really need to have a lot of room. Um, I was kind of smiling because the girl in the video, um, she was like, I'm just going to do like six cards. And she, so she, she does hers very differently. She doesn't do them like this, but um, I just... Mine end up being very, um, very random. So then you can take your stain, and this is only really because I don't have wild honey and oxide. You can take your, um, you can actually use your ink pad if you only have ink pads and you don't have spray because, I mean, we're not spraying anything really. I did actually with this, with the honey, but, um, and then wipe it off. But this is what I did to get that other effect. And then the stain is just going to be a little bit more pigmented and it doesn't react the same way with water. It still reacts with water, but it doesn't have the same cloudiness that the oxide does. So I like adding this wild honey. I feel like it looks a lot like rust and rust plays really well with the, um, while with the, uh, salvage patina to me. If you don't spray it with water, it's just going to give you a mostly a splotch. So if you add the water, you're just thinning it out to really give it more of a, um, you know, cloudy look. And I'll probably go back and after I'm done with these and they dry and I'll probably add some collage I might go and collage some other ones. Um, all right, let's see. <clears throat> I'll try to get as much of the honey off of there as possible before I put the purple on. And my plate is only yellow because I used alcohol ink on it. So, I highly recommend if you're going to use alcohol ink to dedicate one plate just to your alcohol inks because then if it stains it, then you don't end up with a plate stain because both of my 5x7 and my 3x5 are both stained now <laughs> So because of that alcohol ink that I used last week. All right, so let's do some Catch Flamingo, which is actually quite light. So I hope the weather is kind of nice where you guys are today. I'm, we are kind of in waiting mode, expecting it to rain some, it's been raining 
lots of lots of rain the last few days in it but we're kind of expecting it to rain again today yesterday it was nice in the morning and then the rain rolled through a cat hair my cat's not in here today. Oh yeah, he is, he's on my chair. <laughs> Good thing I didn't sit down. My cat is on my chair. Anybody else have a cat that likes to sit on their chair randomly? No, I'm not in Oklahoma, I'm in Texas. So they're probably having tornadoes in Oklahoma, right? I don't really pay attention to all the rain, all the weather, but honestly, some days I'm just like, is it raining? Oh, I didn't know it was gonna rain today. Supposedly, there's some sort of disturbance in the Gulf right now, which is not surprising because we're getting really close to hurricane season. June 1st, yay! Say that with the most sarcasm ever. A little bit of um, wilted violet here to go along with the pinks. Wilted violet's a nice dark purple. It's not like dark, dark, but it's kind of dark. The, uh, what's this one? Milled Lavender, super light. Can't really see it. It doesn't really show up at all. I'm sure there are plate times to use it. I just don't know what they are. So. You get kind of a different effect depending on how dry it is on the plate and how much ink or spray is on the plate. And... I thought I had an actual stain, but I don't have a stain in the purple. Like, if you wanted to see, yes, definitely get out your gel press and play, Connie. Or, yeah, so just, um, just. See what happens just take get it out and you know try it see because i i just love my gel plate i think it's it's the best tool to keep next to you when you're working on practically anything and even for cards i mean you could do a background like this for a card like it doesn't have to be this is a stain by the way this is salvage patina, patina stain not oxide um it doesn't have to be for index cards or anything. I like the index cards because I feel like they're very um, uh, small. They're small and they're easy to play with. They're cheap. They don't cost, you know, this was $3 for a hundred of them on Amazon. So just um, easy and there's no like, oh, it's the most expensive paper, you know, or anything like that. It's just, there we go. I know, I said if you spray it, it gets too saturated, but I was getting a little frustrated with trying to just drop it on there. I went back to my purple, my blue, because um, I could not find, I don't have any purple stain, and I just wanted to try the stains. I don't have any um, distress in the stain in purple. How do I clean my plate? Um, I don't. <laughs> Earlier, um, so this is all water-based product, so I actually just sprayed it with some water and then wiped it down with my towel. So I just, um, just basically like this, just sprayed it and then blotted the spray off, the water off. But for the most part, um, if I'm usually when I'm gel, pr gel pr printing, I'm using acrylic and it will just clean itself off. You can also use, um, uh, let me see, baby oil I've heard um, or alcohol or um, like hand sanitizer. I don't really worry about it. Um, I'm not 
worried about it being dirty or not or not getting you know it's gonna be what it is or even if when you go back later and you make another print on something it might have a little bit of a of a hint of some other color but to me that's just just kind of the fun of a gel plate sorry it's way off the picture because all my all my cards are all in the way because when you do gel printing you definitely want to make sure you have lots of room for your product your pages that you printed to dry so um I don't have like I was saying I don't have the um sprays of the like the what I call the neutral colors which are like vintage photo and gathered twigs and vintage photos one that the girl in the video used which I could um if you go on in, on YouTube and search like B index card you probably find it I don't really know the name of the of the Thing. But I also linked it on my own YouTube. So she just actually did this, but she uses an acrylic block. And then, um, so you can do that the same way as you would any other stain, or let's see. I'm gonna put my brush. Grab a brush. And hers was, um, You can, I don't have any actual, so you can add kind of a distress. I really like the honey though. Like this is cool, but actually I like this, but you know what? Do it this way. I like that better. <laughs> it looks like coffee. The, the vintage photo. It's very dark. I like the, the honey because I like the gold, the gold look. It looks more like rust, but and Distress Ink is the same as the Spray Stain. It's going to be this kind. It's not the Oxide. There is Oxide Ink um, for ink pads. And um, it would be the same idea. You can do the same thing where you just stamp it down, use the ink on your plate. And then that's how you kind of pull up the color. And you can add more water to it if you want to. Lots of different things that you can do with it. It's not... It's interesting to think of it as it's not just ink, right? It's not just an ink pad anymore. It's a place, it's a store, it's a place to store, um, store the ink, but it's not necessarily, yeah, I'm trying to do this again. It's not really, I'm not really feeling it. You can do it like this. And do kind of like a splatter on there. And that's sort of an interesting effect. So kind of fun, right? All right, hand sanitizer cleans and baby oil conditions. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Thank you. I know I have an actual thing that's called gel plate conditioner in the store uh, from Dina Wakeley, I think. Um, it's probably just baby oil. I don't know. But, it, you know, it's a small bottle of some clear liquid. I don't r really worry about it. I haven't had too many issues. I mean, the only issues I've really had with my gel plate is that I feel like it's very... The temperature here is kind of tricky in the summer, so it's hard for me to do printing with like acrylic paint because my paint tends to dry out very quickly. But I know there's extenders and things you can get for it. I'm just don't, I have it. I just don't like having to mix extra things with my paint because I'm lazy, I guess. All right, so we put some splatters on here. You can see it's faded in and that's okay that's an interesting background I'm okay with that I'm going to do these just to use up the ink or the the spray that's on here even though it's very very diluted and that's kind of what the girls in the video look like I'm not trying to recreate what she did I'm just she used the vintage to start with but she had the spray and I don't have the spray the oxide spray I don't have it on me at home. 
I said, oh, I guess I'm going to have to go shopping today in my own store and buy myself some vintage photo and some, I didn't try gathered twigs. I'm sure it's darker. I, you know, vintage photo is quite dark, so. But that's neat because it kind of gives that, it definitely gives it that aged look. If that's what you want for your background. Ooh, that's really pretty. That even looks more like coffee. You could also use real coffee. Um, I haven't tried putting coffee in a actual spray bottle, but that would be kind of interesting. I actually thought about that last night. I really like the dark gathered twigs, actually. Probably more than vintage photo. You never know what you're gonna get when you're doing gel printing with Anna and Tim Holtz Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so let me do some more gathered twigs. Again, I don't have the spray, I don't have the, I just have this little ink pad. Um, you can buy, you know, the, um, the re-inkers, which are for the Distress ink pads, and I've seen people use these like um, as if they're watercolor, so they're as if they're liquid watercolor, which is basically what you're doing when it's a when it's an ink pad too, and you're just spraying it to dilute it a little bit. And my water is running out, so it's not going to spray very well. But um, I would say the only thing you really have to really be concerned about if you're doing index cards is you know they're not intended really for a lot of wet media so just keep that in mind when you're working on them um you know if you do too many things that are on one uh card it's gonna it may end up being a little more a little bit wet the paper might kind of dissolve so just to let just to keep that in mind But you can let it dry in between and it should be okay. I like this idea of this kind of looks like splatters. It kind of looks like I splattered my coffee all over it. Although my coffee is never that dark. Also, I figured out if you're going to, um, if you're going to coffee dye anything, you should really use espresso powder, which I've seen people do. And I only tried it the other day, but I did try coffee and then I tried espresso, um, instant espresso, like activated with water. And the espresso is so much darker. Somebody said, Connie said, I saw someone yesterday, black tea dyeing vellum, soak for two hours and then air dry and use it for all sorts of things. There you go. Um, so you can, doing like tea dyeing and coffee dye and that kind of thing is, Super, super fun. And it smells really good. <laughs> so um, I like doing that too. I've done some papers with my coffee. Um, but I don't really know where they are right now. Here they are. I just have some old book pages and these were not, these were actually this color before I, this color before I started dyeing them. And then I have an old syringe that I saved from when I was, um, you know, for my son's medicine from like a long, long, long time ago. They give you those syringes to give your kids medicine. I mean, he's nine. This was when he was like a baby. And I found one of these syringes. And I bet you could get one if you went to the um, went to the pharmacy and asked them. They'd probably give you one. Um, and I just put the coffee and the, the ground espresso, the instant espresso in the, in the thing. And it made it easier. And I could actually do some... Um, that look like circles and things like that. And then I did some splatters. Better than just soaking it because when you soak it, you're really making that paper weaker, you know, for the moment. And I think I actually dried these in the oven. You can dry them at 200 degrees. Keep an eye on them, but you can put them in the oven for a few minutes and then they get dried out and crispy. Or of course you can let them dry out, out normally too, but... So that's kind of a similar look, even though this is with ink and this is with coffee. So it can be kind of a similar effect. If you don't want to mess with coffee or you don't have coffee, you don't do coffee, then um, you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, you can get the same kind of splatters if you just use ink, too. 
I'm sure if you have spray. I have all the sprays. I buy all the sprays for the store because I want people to be able to get them. I have almost all the colors that I can get. I have all the colors of inks. Um, so, and the, and I've tried to reorder all of the, all of the re-inkers as well. So I hope you'll go check that out. Um, and take a look. And I hope that you consider getting, if you don't have a gel plate, think about getting one. You can even just get one that's this size. A five by seven. What is this? Three by five. Um, it's the perfect size for an index card, as I believe Zoe pointed out the other day. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, these could be used with my cards. Exactly. Um, the one I really, what I really like too is, uh, to do, sorry, something got stuck. Um, to do like music paper. I love music paper and sewing machine, sewing patterns. Ooh, I love to do sewing pattern, tissue paper patterns, you know, for these old patterns that are like, nobody would ever make that garment. <laughs> I like sewing patterns because to me they're bossy because they're like cut here and fold here and this is the grain. And the, to me, that's just like the little sewing patterns have this bossiness to them, which I just love. So, um, but I also, because I come from a quilting background, so I feel like including any kind of sewing uh, pattern is a, a nod to my quilting background, which is really funny considering that sewing and quilting are not the same thing. I don't sew in 3D, so I can't do clothes and garments. Here's the, um, it's dried a little bit, the, the wilted violet and kitsch flamingo in the background. So you can see the oxides as they dry, they lighten and they give you a really cloudy, soft effect. Sylvan says you love using them. The sprays? I, yeah. So, okay, cool. All right, so I think um, I'm going to wrap up today, and um, as a reminder, that every Tuesday I'll be back here, roughly 9.30-ish, maybe 10, probably 9.30. Um, it depends. I have a meeting that I have with my friend every Tuesday and Thursday, and um, we usually wrap up around 9.30, and then I jump on Facebook or Instagram Live. And then I'll be live on Facebook on Friday, and I always – oh, the pattern paper. Okay, cool. Um, I always uh, replay – put everything on YouTube – so you can watch it, and this will also be available in um, my uh, IGTV, too, if you ever want to go back and reference how I did something. Not like I'm the expert, because I'm really not. You know there's a whole YouTube channel called Not the Expert? It's really funny. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. This was um, probably Mermaid Lagoon or S S Salvage Patina and Oxide, and then this is uh, the Wild Honey Spray. So Wild Honey is a really nice, it's kind of an orangey color, orangey gold. And then I'm sure Fossilized Amber is also a really pretty one. Um, I think this is actually Fossilized Amber. No, maybe this one. This was kind of fun. I did this one last night. The spray, the Wild Honey, and the purple. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. And I will hopefully see you around on Instagram. And I'll catch you later. Bye.